So now that we've gotten past the uh, IntelliSense personal problems, except for this error and that error, uh, we know we're fine. The compiler verified it, so let's just keep going. A matrix times a vector returns a vector, so 2D uh, operator multiply. Oh, okay, so a general rule of thumb. Uh, the multiplication operator is a binary operator, meaning it takes a left-hand argument and a right-hand argument. And I can make those as member functions. And I guess in this case, since the matrix will always be on the left, that I could make it a member function. But I tend to make them non-member functions. Um, there's a few reasons why. If we have a type, if if I can take a type, for example, a vector. So a vector... I can multiply that by a scalar, and we did that. We said vector times a scalar. But I can also say a scalar times a vector. So this is called the reflexivity, and that's why I like to make these operators binary. Now, it just so happens that that in our implementation, we're going to take a matrix and multiply it to a vector, and we're always going to put the matrices on the left. And since this class type is a matrix, the implicit operand, operand, the implicit operand type will be a matrix 2D, which is what we want. The left hand is a matrix. But I tend to simply, since I make binary operators non-members because of this rule, I tend to just stick with that, with uh, with this binary operation, binary operators. Well, even though the matrix class will always be on the left religious preference. The code executes the same. You can make it a member operator if you want to. That's totally fine. I'm going to go non-member. So let's just say uh, inline. Uh, oh, I forgot to say inline here as well since we write the definition. We're going to write the definition outside the matrix class, so I need to say inline there. Inline vector 2D operator multiply const matrix 2D reference left and const vector 2D vector where's my vector 2D uh, do I need the namespace what's the problem oh, IntelliSense you drive me nuts sometimes vector 2D reference right and since that forced me to scroll I'm actually going to bring the operands down here semicolon and looks like IntelliSense is still having problems. I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling a little unsure here because all the red squigglies, even though I think we're A-OK, -okay, we're in the same namespace as Vector2D. I, I guess it could be a little more... Oh, OK, whatever. <laughs> red squiggly's gone. Thank you, IntelliSense. Always useful, but sometimes not. <sighs> Let's go stub these out. Control-C... Uh, we don't have an INL file yet for the matrix class, so add new item. Uh, hit our file and call it matrix2d.inl. And Visual Studio appropriately keeps the extension .inl instead of .h. Remember, I'm not going to do header guards in here because I'm literally going to include this INL code into our matrix2dh file. And the only reason why we make the INL files is to have somewhat of a separation, even though we're pasting, we're literally pasting the inline code in the header file. I want some separation just mentally to keep my code clean. So if I look at, recall from vector2dh, we had all these uh, declarations, but the actual implementation gets pasted in here. And so we have this nice separate file, which gives us a mental switch to, okay, well, I'm done setting up the declarations. Let's actually go and do the definitions. All right, so same thing here. I'm going to I'm going to close both of these, and we want to do that with our matrix file. So I'm going to pound include matrix inl file like so, and then let's grab these, copy them again just in case. Go to the inl file, paste them. Control A, Control K F, Control Enter, and this is going to be a constructor. So I have to scope that like so. But I no longer have to say explicit or inline because that's part of the declaration up here. The compiler's seen it. It's done. It's satisfied. We don't need to say it again. And then we don't need, we do not need to redefine our default arguments. In fact, I think we get a compile error if we leave them there because the compilers say, "Hey, you already, you already defined the default argument values. So why are you trying to do it again?"
Okay, so we'll leave this empty for now because we're going to unit test it. And then down here, I'm going to say return vector 2D. Okay, now IntelliSense is having issues. It might be, the reason why is because it's probably like this INL file. I'm not quite sure of the context in it. Maybe it, IntelliSense is smart enough to realize we're including it over there. Who knows? Maybe it's not. It doesn't look like it is for now. Uh, I don't need to scope this operator because we're making it a non-member operator, whereas the constructor is a member of the matrix class, so I have to scope it like so. Uh, let's go back to our matrix 2D test file, and I don't know, since we're already including this error, we should, let's, let's see if we get any errors. I'm going to control shift B, build. Binary operator has too many operands. Too many parameters. Okay, now I'm getting a real error, and this error is coming from the compiler, so I can look at this and be like, hmm, what's going on? And at first glance, I can't see what's wrong. Maybe you do, but I don't see it offhand. So let's look at the error list. Uh, IntelliSense still having issues. Binary operator multiply has too many parameters. Why is that? I said we're going to have a matrix left and a vector 2D right, and I'm it knows what a vector is. I found included it there. So what is... It may be having a hard time still understanding what vector 2D is. And it may so happen to be that uh, the rules of namespacing are escaping my memory. So just to test that theory, I'm going to say math here. Copy that and put that there. Control shift B. We get the same error. But this, is, this might be a little more helpful though. Math has no member vector 2D. Now, again, in sense it could be lying, it could not be. I'm not quite sure. The compiler definitely tells truth, though. And it's... What's, what's the deal? I'm going to pause the video, do a little research, then come back. So I debated on editing this part of the video out, but I think it's useful to see me get scrambled. Um, I'm definitely not perfect, and I'm actually quite embarrassed about <laughs> what's going on here. Let me Let me explain it. I figured it out. Um, let me take these off first. Let's build it. Binary operator has too many operands. And the reason why it's giving me that error is because this is a non-member function declared as a member function of this struct. In order to get rid of this error, I actually need to define it globally, which or declare it globally, which we did, I believe, with the vector class. If we go vector 2D, yep, all the operators are outside. So now when I build this, Build succeeded, we're fine. Um, the reason why I actually made that mistake, I think, is quite useful to cover as well, is as in here, when we overload this binary operator, the like I said earlier, the compiler expects this instance to be the left operand. Thus, I don't need to define it explicitly like I did there, and the right operand will be the vector that's passed in. Um, but again, my religion, religion is to do these binary operators as non-members. Um, but then I was also thinking, this is a struct, and the reason I made it a struct is I just want it, it to default to public, just like we did with the vector class. You know, I'll just expose the stuff. I don't think it's large enough to really hide away any details. It's, it's almost a primitive to me. In fact, when we get to shader programming, you'll see that matrices are pretty much primitive types as far as uh, the graphics hardware is concerned. But anyway... So it's public, so I didn't think to naturally put friend here. If I can put it there, friend. Um, go look at friend on my C++ playlist if you need to, but just a uh, little note here. When I put friend there, the compiler says, oh, you're, this is a declaration, I'll treat it as a declaration, but you're also saying that this thing is your friend. So then the compiler cues in that this is going to be a non-member operator. So if I build that, build succeeded now. But we don't need it to be a friend because everything's public and friends, the reason we have friends is so that they can see our private parts. So everything's public here. Let's put it down in here as the declaration. Control KF and get the build succeeded. I think we're good.